um, we will now begin. Good um, afternoon and welcome to the Trade, Travel, and Tourism Committee. I'm Chairman Joe Buscaino. I'm joined by my colleague, Council Member Mike Bonin. Today is Tuesday, November 5th. Thank you all for joining us. I know there's also a, a overfill room um, who are listening and tuning in. Thank you for your presence today and those who are listening on Council Audio. With that, Mr. Bond, I believe Mr. Kokorian may join us. He is um, next door in the uh, the E and E committee. So, with that, uh, if I can turn um, your attention to today's agenda, um, Mr. Bond, unless you want to hold any of the, uh, these two items, I'd like to take items two and three on consent. Okay. okay. With that, we'll approve items two and three. Uh, do we have any speakers on two and three, Mr. Clerk? I don't see any. No, sir. Okay, so do we have any um, general public comment? We do. We do. Okay, so let's uh, let's um, approve items two and three and send those two to council. And uh, with that, let us take then uh, item number one. Item one: Motion, Busca and Obana, instructing Los Angeles World Airports to report relative to changes to taxi and rideshare pickup policies. At Los Angeles International Airport. Don't you do the general comment, Sir, you don't have to be patient, okay? Thank you so much, yeah. We'll take item number one first, okay? Thank you. So, with that, um, this item before us, um, do we have any representatives here uh, to speak on behalf of uh, Uber and Lyft? Anyone? Rep okay. Seeing none, uh, just a, an opening comment, if I may, Mr. Bond and, and those who have joined us. We all know that LAX is experiencing a $14 billion dollar, dollar modernization um, infrastructure project. Now, as we all know, every single terminal is being uh, renovated. A new midfield satellite concourse is being constructed. Uh, a new consolidated rental car facility, two new intermodal transportation facilities, and of course, the centerpiece of this modernization, construction of a new people mover. And all of this construction requires lane closures at the central terminal area, which would result in a Thanksgiving-like gridlock if the airport did not take steps to reduce the number of uh, vehicles in the central terminal area. Now, this was the objective, as we all know, of the item that's before us, uh, LA exit. Um, it's been quite a rocky start, as we have heard, as we have seen. Um, both passengers and drivers have uh, reported uh, over uh, an hour long wait, um, but it's only been a week. Um, and although it's been very frustrating week, we are here to ensure that improvements um, are made and wait times drastically decrease. That's our ultimate goal. Now the problem we need to solve, I feel, is that at times at the peak demand, um, there are a thousand rideshare pickups per hour at LAX and we need supply to meet this demand. And I've invited both Uber and Lyft uh, to this committee meeting today and unfortunately uh, Uber and Lyft are not here and We've been given some excuses from both of them for not being here when we have an important problem to solve. And I'm, I'm reminded that when Uber and Lyft came to me for advice and for support, my door was always open for them. And I'm disgusted and frustrated and upset that if we're going to solve this problem together, we need the rideshare share companies at the table along with our airport executives at the table to solve this problem. Um, so with that, I know we have um, Ms. Flint here and her senior executive team. Uh, we have questions, but before that, Mr. Bonin, I'm going to uh, turn to public comment. And I know those who've experienced some of the frustrations, I don't want to make you wait. So I'd like to hear public comment first, but I'd like to first call on our colleague, uh, Council Member Paul Caretz, to kick it off. 60 seconds. <laughs> Hopefully you'll give me a few minutes. I appreciate it. Thank Four you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Bonin. Welcome. Um, 
Thank you for giving me the opportunity to comment early and get back. Yeah, to you know you have to get to committee. Sure. Uh, the item before you today asks for LAWA to report back on the launch of LA Exit and its changes to the taxi and rideshare uh, pickup procedures. And I recently introduced a motion to go even a little further, calling on LAWA to rescind the changes as, as they refer to taxi cabs. And uh, just an aside, my chief of staff just came in on Thursday to uh, LAX, and she had injured her back. Uh, she would not have been able to get on the shuttle were it not that she was traveling with her daughter who helped lift her luggage. There was no one there to assist, and there were no lines. It was just chaos. So people that were less able to be aggressive, uh, disabled, frail, elderly, injured, um, people with a lot of kids uh, found they were taking almost an hour to get on, whereas more aggressive people were getting on shuttles in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So those are some flaws that we clearly have to uh, address, um, plus flaws in, uh, in the receiving lot um, that could be addressed by more shuttles and more staff at, at a minimum. So uh, hopefully those things will be taken into account. Um, but I went as far as I did in my motion for a few reasons. Uh, one of them that, uh, according to uh, Lawa's own studies, TNCs com comprise 25% of traffic at uh, the central terminal, uh, taxis less than 5%. So it would appear that uh, including taxis will have little or no positive impact on the actual traffic. Um, but we lose a lot of convenience for a number of, of uh, different constituencies. Um, and it also makes it more difficult for Uber and Lyft because there's more cross currents and more competition in the actual lot for space. Um, traditional taxi cab riders are different than TNC customers. Most likely they're seniors, frail, elderly, uh, disabled. Um, they're... Uh, Folks who are expecting to be able to get in a taxi cab <clears throat> right when they exit the terminal and who are severely inconvenienced by the new system, along with business travelers, uh, many of whom fly in just for a meeting. They expect to be able to get out of LAX in half an hour, get to their meeting for a couple hours, get back and fly home. And uh, I'm sure there are a number of travelers in that circumstance that have flown out to a meeting that they could never get to in time. Um, also families with multiple children and suitcases and car seats uh, find it very difficult to uh, keep their kids in line um, and uh, get on uh, this kind of uh, shuttle system. Um, there have been complaints from ADA advocates that uh, this new system creates many problems for the physically challenged and it is a question uh, uh, that I have to ask, among others, has the airport confirmed with the city attorney that our new uh, LA exit system is ADA compliant? Um, it def definitely doesn't seem so from the things I've been hearing so far. And uh, I don't know if the new system does anything to take into account around 240 wheelchair accessible vans operated by taxi companies that uh, once again are no longer present at, at the curb. Um, many seniors uh, are consistent taxi cab users, whether it's because they aren't early adopters of smartphones or they just depend on the convenience and forcing them to switch creates a substantial burden. I've also heard uh, that there's no protection right now from the elements at the uh, lot where uh, one picks up taxis, Ubers, and Lyfts and fortunately the weather has been compliant so far, but we're not far from what could be a rainy season. Depends on the year, sometimes we have no weather, but uh, we could, and then you would have a lot of people standing in the rain, including seniors and disabled and children that uh, are not well suited to uh, being in the rain for an hour or two. Um, so from what I can tell, the remote lot's too small for the volume of passengers at LAX. There aren't enough vehicles to serve them. Uh, it's inconvenient for drivers and passengers alike. Um, it's also uh, proving to be somewhat of a disaster, both for uh, the drivers of uh, 
Uber and Lyft and taxis. Uh, the significant delays so far rob the drivers of income, and sitting in traffic while the meter running is not uh, great for uh, consumers of taxi rides. It all seems to be the opposite of what should be happening with this system. Um, well, that's why we're here. And it's somewhat <laughs> ironic that we're, we're doing this to build a people mover, which is supposed to be uh, more convenient, but we're punishing the same people for years until the system's built. And so uh, I would encourage us to uh, uh, take the steps to protect and expedite the trips of, uh, of all of our visitors and uh, to move back the taxis for convenience and to make it all uh, easier for all concerned and to uh, enlarge the uh, lot for Uber and Lyft, which I understand we may be doing with a, a second lot being added. I think if we had one for Uber, one for Lyft, and had the taxis at the curb, um, it, would, uh, it would work uh, much more closely to perfectly uh, not have these massive delays and uh, not also damage the uh, taxi industry as well, which I'm sure you're all aware is, is struggling everywhere but LAX. And it does well at LAX only pr because it provides some people with the convenience that they would pay more for. Um, and so uh, I think we, we would do well to do all of that. If we, uh, if we move the cabs back, I don't think it'll take, uh, uh, have much of an impact on the traffic, but it would provide a lot of people uh, the convenience that they are really looking for. And there are some people that just would like the convenience. I'm not as concerned about them. But uh, all the people that have a real need, they are, are really struggling with the system as it is. So I thank you for considering thank you. all of that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kretz, for joining us. Appreciate your presence. OK, so with that, we're going to turn to those who fill, uh, fill that uh, op, uh, request to speak on item number one, uh, Bill. Bill Rouse, William Rouse, please come forward. Followed by Yegeni Zimolyar. If you carry your name, please come forward. We got three seats here. And then Johans Mersha, please come forward. So we'll start with Mr. Rouse. Okay. Good afternoon. Good morning, council members. Uh, thank you so much for the time uh, to be here. I, w I only have a minute, so I cannot express my appreciation enough to the staff for their professionalism throughout this process. However, we have a basic math problem. That lot is not designed to take as many people as it is currently being asked to take. Um, how that happened, uh, I'd like to address next. but. Uh, it is a simple math equation here that uh, if we take 4,000 trips out of that lot, we will benefit everybody, including Uber and Lyft. What happens each and every day is the lot uh, becomes strangled by traffic. Finally, I just want to uh, implore you to investigate what exact ha exactly happened here because it looks to me like the actual trips are way higher than the estimated trips, and it makes me wonder whether the TNCs were ever fully reporting their number of trips uh, because, uh, because it is so far off uh, from what everybody expected. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill. So, Mr. Uh, Smolyar? Yes. Please put the microphone closer so we can all hear you. Thank the you. The drivers working in the airport, the taxi drivers working in the airport, that was the last threshold for them to make money. Uber and Lyft was let in in the airport prior. We lost our hope when they were there. Now with this slot, there is a lot of traffic. There is a lot of complaints we get as a companies. We get complaints from our customers who are saying, we just frustrated. We're not going to fly through the LAX. We're going to go through Burbank. We're frustrated that these things happen. It takes us hours and hours to get whatever we need to go. Main thing is Uber and Lyft using the opportunity to persuade their drivers to go inside the lot and charge $140 for the trip that used to be $27. We're still charging the same fare. We're still doing the same thing that we used to do. Every morning, Channel 5 News for the last five days, they keep saying, put the taxi back, put the taxi back inside the airport. Listen to them. It's in every city in this great country. We have taxi. When you come out, we're going to help LAX by putting taxi inside the airport and Uber and Lyft do their part outside the airport. It's been like that for many, many years before. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Okay. Uh, the Johannes? Yeah, my name okay, is... Okay, hold on. Is there a Camo 
um, Soccer Bayats, thank you. Mohammed Purastagar, thank you. Okay, Johannes, thank you. Okay, uh, go ahead. My name is Johannes. Uh, I've been driving a taxi for the last over 20 years. Right now, what we are experiencing is, you know, to go to the, from holding lot to the uh, uh, pickup but minimum taking 45 minutes, even after six o'clock, it's taking over one hour to get in and pick up a customer, and more or less half of that time also to get out of the, uh, the, the you know, the uh, pickup uh, place. And uh, what we're saying is, you know, we're not asking a special treatment, but if the customers are waiting that long, and if it's taking us to go and pick up that long, what are we trying to uh, accomplish right there? And plus, and the, our drivers are most of them, you know, older men and women. They are not allowed even to use the restroom in that, in the, in, in that uh, you know, area. So it takes about three to four hours to go in and out. And these people, you know, we don't have any place even to use the restroom. Thank you. Thank you. Is there Jano Baganian? Jano, please take this empty seat. Kamo? Yeah. Thank Good you. afternoon. My name is Kamo. I represent Independent Capco. I'm the president. Uh, I would like to address these issues to the committee. Um, since the Uber and Lyft chances are kicked in, we have lost 80% of the city business. So after moving us from the airport to this parking lot, my drivers and statistics shows we lost 40% of their income. So drivers are not able to make money. They lost, instead of 10 trips, they do five or six. So plus that, um, because of these delays, it's a lot of inconvenience for the passengers and the visitors that come from all over the world to visit the Los Angeles, great Hollywood, great downtown Los Angeles, eye of the America also, not only New York. Another thing is negative impact on the business, tourism, hotels, restaurants, not only taxi, please take us back to the terminals. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Mitchell, please take the empty chair. Here, Mohammed. Good afternoon. <coughs> My name is Mohammed Purastagar. I'm representing United Independent Taxi, which has served its citizens since 1977. The first speaker clearly explained everything to you. Uh, business travelers need speed and convenience, being able to jump into the taxi as soon as they get exit from the terminal. Business travelers are often on very tight schedule and they may fly just attend to the meeting and rushing to the airport and they cannot wait for the, the shuttle and uh, from the shuttle coming to the, the new lot and from there wait for the taxi. And uh, they have to schedule additional time in order to, uh, to get their meeting, you know. Uh, I believe the LA uh, lava chart is indicate taxi cab is not congestion in the airport is four and a half percent is nothing you compare the private car or TNC company so it is best pub, best, best interest of the public is taxi cab is standing stand. thank you sir thank you chair Leon Slomovic Slomovic please take the empty chair in the center is it Jano yes Good afternoon, welcome. Good afternoon, thank you very much. My name is John Obagdinian, LA City Cab. I was part of representing taxi cab companies, working with staff on the design of the lot. As uh, Mr. Rouse mentioned earlier, there is something wrong in the equation. Uh, Uber and Lyft were at the meeting for a whole year. All of a sudden, they're complaining about the lot being inadequate. That's unfair to the taxi companies. We were taken out, uh, out of the X, uh, LAX terminals because of the congestion that was created by Uber and Lyft. Taxi trips from 2.2 million before Uber and Lyft went down to 1 million. So we've actually reduced the traffic in the terminal by a million passengers a year. Right now we're about 35, 30, 800 uh, passengers as of last week. So by taking us out of that lot that the, created that bit, the creation of the, the trips congestion by Uber, we will save the passenger, give a better experience that the LAVA's goal was to provide exceptional guest services to the passengers of the airport. And we've Thank you. gone the opposite way. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay, hold on, Mr. Mitchell. Is there a Hirak, a Navasartian, a Kyogani? Please come forward to the empty chair in the front. Thank you. Mr. Mitchell? I'm for the taxis, definitely coming in. 
uh, Clifton Moore design worked perfect. They, uh, if you put the Clifton Moore design on the inside now, since you've already built it, it'll work perfect. Put the scheduled service and the flyway together the way it was for 20 years. They separated us outside for some reason. I had to get rid of half my fleet, and the people can't find us. And in a way, this is sort of a Trojan horse to, for, for them to become a, a, a monopoly. The, 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 you know, Uber's not the cleanest kind of people on earth here, but the, 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 they've got us in the wrong spot with on-call service together, which is against the Public Utilities Commission uh, uh, decisions. Uh, but if they move the taxis in, the scheduled service to, to, to combine, the Santa Barbara Airbus is on my side too. They can't even park out here and pick up people. So move the scheduled service, please, in, into the flyaway spot. And then it'll, everyone will walk out and leave. And so it'll be as simple as that. Thank you. Is there a Gennady Mirostan? Please take the empty chair in the front. Thank you. Leon? Yes. Please. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I represent Taxi Worker Association of Los Angeles and the president and the spokesman. I'd like to uh, bring some much needed perspective and some statistics. Taxis make up about 3.7, just shy of 3.7% of all of the traffic in the airport and about 5% of the arrival level traffic. Buses, when taking into account the, the vehicle sizes and number of available lanes, buses take up more than 20% and so are the t TNCs. TNCs, by our calculations, um, take up uh, more than 60% of the traffic on uh, departure level. Cabs are... Um, capable of dispatching upwards of 800 uh, vehicles an hour to service the passengers quicker, and it has been proven um, uh, in the last week. They have been servicing the passengers faster and more efficiently than Uber and Lyft. Thank you. Harak? Yes, good evening. Uh, is, I'm sorry, there, is there a David Rivelis? Please come to the uh, middle chair. First, I really appreciate Put the microphone closer so really we can hear you. I really appreciate uh, that we are present here and you are trying to help us. That is our great pleasure. Second, uh, I'm a kind of driver like 20 years. I'm doing service in Los Angeles City, like 15 years more in independent cab company. So actually, like one week, no more maybe, when we work in this new spot to pick up people. Uh, my customers, how many times I pick up they are really very, very sad. They, they, they are not happy. They are saying we are waiting a long time. And honestly, some of them, their anger comes on driver. That's, <laughs> that's the thing that we don't want it. <laughs> so we lose a lot of business, actually. Normally, I was doing 10 to 12 trips in the airport before. But right now, maximum five to, anyway, six, four to five to six, no more. Because... Especially after 6 p.m., last airport my day, 6 p.m., it Thank took you. me an hour 40 minutes to just get in. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gennady? Yes. Your name, sir? Gennady? Hi, my name is Gennady Mirmostein. I'm driving taxi 25 years, so enough experience. And from this 25 years, I learned that we are small business. Taxi is small business. Small business should do care about their customers, and we really do. But now somebody try to divide us from our customers just to make, I don't know, some Uber and Lyft thing. Uber and Lyft consists from the not professional drivers. Actually, they create traffic in the city. Nobody saying about that, but whole city is trafficking. Now, when you bring them all together to one parking lot, you kill this facility, LAX. And God save our customers. And I hope there will be no higher end because then we will have real problem. We will have bad thing. So, like taxi driver, I ask you, please put us back. Let us to serve people professionally. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a um, hold on, hold on, please, Giovanni on uh, this necessenzia? Uh, okay, please come forward. How about a Shimel's Tadesi Mikhail? Please come forward. Uh, Mr. Rivellis, is it? Yeah. David? Yeah. Hello, everybody. i taxi driver, and maybe you don't know, but two weeks ago, in Saturday morning, 
we work with buses, taxi with buses, we work inside terminal together Saturday morning. And we, it will be okay. It was two weeks ago. We can work again with buses together because a lot of customers, they have a big problem because old people and disabled people, they very nervous and exactly I work last six days in LAX, exactly me. And every time they cry in taxi, old people, they talk, we don't understand what's happened with LAX. It's a crazy problem because nobody can, can support them with luggage, with everything. Thank you. Thank you. Giovanni? Yeah. Speak, um, to the, speak closer to the mic, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, I was mulling it over how this system came into being. And the only thing I can come up with is that Putin and Xi Jinping designed the system to torture everybody, <laughs> including the cab drivers and the passengers. Uh, another fact is that upon entrance into the lot, they designed the cab drivers and the, the uh, what you call uh, Uber and Lyft drivers, the same lane, which is unbelievable. If anything, you guys should at least separate the two. Okay. Thank you. I, that's it for me. Thank you, sir. All right, guys. Is there a um, Gary Vogan? Gary Vogan, please come forward. And an Afrat Akbar, please come forward. Mr. Akbar, A-K-B-A-R, Asraf. Oh, thank you. Come to the, um, the chair up front. Shimelis, is it? Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, thank you very much for allowing us to speak. Uh, I have been driving taxi for the last 23 years with United Independent Cab. I am uh, also uh, the Taxi Workers uh, Association uh, Vice uh, President. Uh, we have been petitioning uh, this issue since April. We brought the issue to the Taxi Commission with over 1,000 drivers signing uh, uh, what is to come was something a disaster. Uh, we were not listened at the Taxi Commission. Uh, now, there we are. It's so frustrating. Uh, customers are very unhappy with the situation. We are very unhappy with the situation. We're wasting more time to drive in. A lot of drivers are involving in accident in the holding lot because it's very stressful the, the way it is handling, uh, the way it is handled. Um, if it continues, it will uh, be very bad for drivers and for the consumers as well. I am very thankful to uh, Councilman uh, uh, Mr. Paul Cortez bring the issue to Thank you. the Commission. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Is there an Andre Missonian? Please come to the empty chair. Okay, Mr. Vogan, go ahead. Yes. Good afternoon, Good afternoon, gentlemen. My name is Gary Vogan. I am the Secretary of the Los Angeles Taxi Workers Association, and I have been a driver since 1988, and I'm currently a driver at Yellow Cab Company. And I want to speak today about the new LA Exit project. You've all heard what a disaster it has been, the wait times for passengers and drivers. I have taken up to an hour and a half to get inside the new holding lot from our old holding lot. But even if you can correct these traffic problems, I wonder who designed this project with the handicap in mind. We do have rain in Southern California. We are a month or two from the rainy season. Can you imagine what will happen to some old lady in a wheelchair out there in the open? Can you imagine the lawsuits that await the city from this? Can you imagine what will happen to passengers, hundreds and hundreds of people out there in the open rain? Those little green umbrellas are no protection Thank against you. the elements. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ashraf. Ashraf. Uh, uh, thank you, Councilman, uh, uh, for arranging this kind of meeting for here, uh, here from the drivers. I'm uh, driving Yellow Cab. I'm a, a Yellow Cab me board member also, and I'm driving like around uh, 25 years. So, so we are hearing, you are already hear a lot of people's 
the experience of LAX for my, it, before it was good, but nowadays is happening, is disaster all over the LAX. Not only passenger, not only driver, and who are working like as a, um, helping the uh, traffic direction, they are suffering too much. They are working on the, under the sunlight all day. Uh, some of the uh, workers, they are complaining, they cannot work like that way. So, so far, uh, I hear everybody's uh, 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 point. So, I'd like to mention very seriously Thank you. two point. One is, like, we are losing the business, not only uh, taxi drivers. Thank you. And uh, another thing is sir, everybody your, your is suffering. Thank I'm you. trying to give everyone the same amount of time. Thank you, sir. Um, we're joined by Mr. Kokorian. Uh, thank you, Paul, for joining us. Uh, is there a Michael Geeler? Please come forward. And Michael is the last speaker on this item, according to our, our, our speaker card here. Andre, is it? Yeah. Welcome. Uh, thank you. <coughs> uh, former driver, former president of Independent Taxi, currently work as a recruiting uh, manager at the Yellow Cap. I uh, just want to uh, mention that uh, this LA exit uh, slot system causing is uh, a causing substantial hardship to the uh, most vul vulnerable uh, travelers. And that's uh, said that TNC passengers and taxi passengers are different people, uh, not different people, but different passengers. And uh, especially we get uh, ADA already advocating about the challenges that they've been having. Especially we have more than, uh, we have 240 vans that serve, can serve uh, disabled, all types of disabled uh, uh, services they might need including wheelchair vans. Um, uh, we also, uh, <clears throat> there's also challenges for elderly people getting out of, uh, in and out of the airport, especially for a long trip and bumpy uh, flights. You know, the last thing you want to get is uh, just get on the bus and then. Also, uh, there's uh, problems with um, uh, larger families traveling with children. I want to also mention the weather issues. Thank you. Got it. Thank you so much. And our final speaker is Michael Giller. Yes. Go ahead. Um, I've been uh, affiliated with the taxi industry for approximately 30 years. I've been a driver, I've been a manager of a few companies, and I've been going back and forth with that. Um, until this LA exit lot was open, I was just able to come to the lot, pick up passengers. I was able to help them with um, with their luggage. I was able to kind of be the face of Los Angeles. Now, I'm relegated to a lot that's not that far away, but it takes me about 45 minutes to get to from the actual taxi lot to the lot right now. These passengers are complaining. They don't have any service whatsoever. They don't know where to go. Uh, they don't get any help with luggage. Some of these families come to visit us with five, six, seven pieces of luggage. They get nothing. They get nothing out of the airport. Um, and many times, when you talk about income, we make a lot less because these trips are five, ten minutes, they're twenty dollars, and we make a lot less now Thank you. than before. Thank you. Thank you. A few other speakers came up onto the screen. If I can call forward Dan Klein and McConan. McConan, please come forward. Is there a McConan in the overflow room? Hold on, Mr. Klein. McConan? Yes. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Klein, one minute. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, council members. Good afternoon. My name is Daniel Klein. I'm speaking on behalf of Bell Cab Management. Uh, Mr. Rouse handed out a brochure that started the LA exit, and it was entitled Reducing Traffic Congestion While Providing Exceptional Guest Experience. I want to mention something that uh, Council Member Busciano I apologize if I mispronounced it. It's fine. I've heard uh, a lot worse. Most. I've heard a lot worse. And, and that has to do with the new construction. And construction's been at LAX for 20 years. If you've been there, you know there's always construction. Cabs have always been moved around, and we do it willingly. When Lawa needs something, they close a stand, they open another one, they move us somewhere that we need to be. It's not that we're trying to be obstructive. We're trying to be helpful. We're trying to help the customers, and we're trying to solve a problem. And I'm just amazed that the TNCs didn't accept your invitation to come here 
and provide a response when the cabs have always participated with the city and shared that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a, a Martin Manukian? Okay, so McConan, is it? Yes. Welcome. My name is McConan. Thank you. I live in your district and I voted for you. You're the nice person. Thank you. My concern is we, the cab drivers, have been driving for a while. The only thing we do is to make a living. That's all we need. The last three years, most of the drivers quit and some of them have become homeless. It's not, it is true. So the only place we make a living is at the airport. You take that away, we are out of business. Some of us invested a hundred thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars. All we have is that. We don't have a 401k or something. That's the only retirement we have. You take away that from us, that's it. You're just killing us or put us, just increase the number of homeless people in Los Angeles. That's what is going to happen. What we are asking you guys is take us back to the terminal where we are in contact with the customers. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is it Martin? Yep. Is there a, a Pargev Karaptatian who just uh, filled out a, um, a card? Pargev, please come forward. P-A-R-G-E-V. Please come forward to the empty, ch um, one of the chairs here. Okay, sir. Hello, Council. Uh, I was not going to talk, but uh, since I was reviewing yesterday, standing like almost one hour there, trying to see what's going on, what I experienced, I was standing next to the one of those parking instructor ladies who is first meeting the customers. Uh, she was basically directing Lyft, Uber, and taxi. All of a sudden, one customer came and said, I'm going to Huntington Beach. She said, well, you better take Lyft because taxis are way too expensive. What I, what I learned there, uh, there, there is not even a fair uh, distribution here. If she is instructed by someone, I have no idea, is it part of her job or not? That's number one issue, which is major. Everybody talks about the rest. I'm not going to repeat myself. But also, uh, I can imagine when, when I was watching, if accident happens there, if some collision happens, I mean, this chaotic situation will be even more worse than uh, what we can imagine. Uh, so please put us back into the terms. Thanks so much. Thank you, sir. Is there a, hold your applause, please. I'm going to get through this. Saeed Rachman, Rachman, probably outside, he just uh, filled out the uh, card. Pargev, is it? Yeah. Please. Yeah. Okay. Saeed, so you can take a seat. Thank you. There? Okay, you know, just that, uh, I don't know uh, who did that job organizing that changing all of the situation, you know, just like putting Uber and taxi together and lining up in a one line and then uh, taking so long, you know, just getting to the airport pickup place. Of course, first speaker, really, I like, uh, first speaker, just really, you put the right way, what's going on, what's the problems. But on top of that, I want to, you know, mention, you know, that frustration, that stressful situation. Which one, you know, nobody talk about that stress. Which one, you know, just getting cab drivers? Actually, everybody who's getting to the for pickup place. And on top of that, customers. Customers. That, and most important, you know, actually, over there, you know, people with kids. Just mention, you know, what's coming with the car seat, other things, or elderly people. Elderly people, maybe you know some different kind of different kind of problem, health problem, movement problem, and then then you know just these people they have to get in a bus, then after that get out. All of that you know just really, Thank really you, you know just. Uh, I Thank you. Know. Your time's up. Okay. Thank you for joining us, Said. Uh, good afternoon. This is Said Rahman. I, I, I'm employed with uh, City Cab, and uh, since they have uh, last two weeks. Um, since they opened the, uh, the lock slots and it's made it very disaster, especially very um, inconvenience for the taxi drivers. Same things to the others, I believe. So the, the riders, uh, the customers who's getting there, it's taking forever for them to get to their place after they troubled, you know, whole day, sometimes eight hours, six hours coming from the long distance and they had to wait tons of times to get home or get to the, their uh, destinations. And also is making 
really hard for the taxi drivers to working instead of four hours, five, I mean, six, seven hours, now they're working 10, 12 hours. Is their hours are, and not making enough money, especially is a very hardship on them. Uh, also, think about that your parents and the grandparents and stuff, they're waiting right there, uh, taking the shuttle service where it's very uh, complicated for them to get there. Thank you. Thank you. So it seems that that was our final speaker. Thank you all to uh, for those who joined us here um, to speak on item number one. I'd like to now um, close uh, comment on item number one and bring forth our uh, airport director, Deborah Flint. Thank you for joining us um, along with your senior executive team. I'll have you introduce them. Mr. Um, Bishop, can I just say a word before they begin? Yes, Mr. Bonin. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank you for having the conversation today. I want to thank yep. Lawa for being here. I want to thank everybody for being here. Um, I, I do want to note that there's a, a large group of people who are not in the room, uh, not just the folks from Uber and Lyft who failed to accept your invite to show up, but the passengers, the, the, the tens of thousands of people who move through that airport every single day. We, we've heard sort of second or third hand uh, from some of the testimony today from some of the taxi drivers and from Mr. Koretz about them. But that, that's how I want to frame this discussion so that, that we're focusing primarily not on the, 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 the very legit issues that the taxi industry has. And we're actually reforming the way we're, we're, we're doing taxis in Los Angeles uh, entirely, DOT. We discussed that in committee a few weeks ago. But to, to, to focus on the passengers, we have seen them on every television station for a week. Mr. Krikorian has spoken to them. Mr. Buscaino has spoken to them. I've spoken to them. Uh, we, we have heard from passengers, and they are not happy. So, um, but we've heard from a segment of passengers. We've heard from the 25% who use Uber or taxis. That's 25% of the trip, so it's less than 25% of the passengers. So I'd like us to discuss today both the, the passenger experience uh, from people who are using the, the LA exit lot and the passenger experience of those who are not, the others who are using it. Um, because there's, there's, there's three different unacceptable situations, right? One is the current situation. It, it, it's unacceptable the way it is, unless dramatically fixed. But the previous situation was unacceptable. You know, taking an hour to go from Lincoln and Sepulveda to get into the CTA on a Monday night, if for anybody, is absolutely unacceptable. I mean, the way things were functioning before wasn't working, and it was getting increasingly worse. And I was, because the airport's in my district, I think I get a disproportionate number of comments and feedback about it, that the system was not working and people were upset about it. And also unacceptable was what the airport and the central terminal was going to be like once we started construction on the people mover, once mm -hmm. we actually started the, the, the massive construction, which is far more uh, extensive and disruptive than anything this airport has seen before. They're essentially building a whole new airport while keeping an airport running, which is a, a, a Herculean task. That scenario was going to be a freaking nightmare for everybody. The 25 percent who are using Uber and Lyft, and the, the other 75 percent. It was going to be an absolute nightmare for everybody. And if you think people are angry, uh, waiting 45 minutes to an hour in the LA exit lot for a taxi, imagine how angry they would be if they're waiting that 45 minutes to an hour trying to get out of the CTA when the meter's running. They'd be even more upset. So. Uh, I, I want us to understand we've got three unpleasant situations, the, 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 the current, the previous, and what could happen unless we do something other than what was happening previously. And that, that as we talk, if you can make sure we're talking about both where the problem is and where the problem yeah. isn't. Yep, Mr. Kokorian. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as long as we're framing the discussion yep. before Ms. Flint uh, speaks, I'd like to add a couple of different frames to Mr. Bonin's um, uh, observations, which are well taken. Um, clearly, it was an unsustained, is this? A, is this yeah, is this thing, on? here go. John, you sound like it's on. Clearly, it was an unsustainable situation. Um, it was going to become a more unsustainable situation as construction uh, progressed, and the airport is put under a nearly impossible 
uh, challenge to try to address the congestion problem that we have. But I think as we're framing this discussion uh, around passengers, we also have to frame it in the context that, um, in my view, much of this congestion problem was self-inflicted uh, when this council made the decision to uh, permit the TNCs to come in under the NELA into the horseshoe and significantly increase the traffic congestion because of that. It was a consequence that a handful of us easily saw coming um, and our concerns were ignored. Um, and I, they were ignored under this a foolish rubric that somehow TNCs are ride sharing when they are anything but that. They don't share rides, they charge for a service, and they are bandit cabs um, that we have now somehow <laughs> made into made into something that um, uh, we should all uh, bend over backwards for because there's an app for that. And um, I, I just, I think this is another example of disruptive technologies that make billionaires out of a handful and put thousands of hardworking middle class people out of work. And then, <laughs> and at the same time, end up providing lousier service to the public because this is the perfect example of the consequence of the change in the business model. Had we had cab stands throughout the horseshoe and not had the congestion caused by TNCs, maybe people would have queued, but they would have queued in an orderly fashion, and they would have been picked up by whatever cab was waiting next in line, not having to check to see whether the driver is the one that they just ordered on their phone and matching up passenger with, uh, with, with driver and all of the delays that come with that. Um, so I, I think that, you know, when we're talking about the customer experience, in my view, the customer experience would have been a hell of a lot better if we hadn't let TNCs into the airport in the first place. Okay, well, let, let's um, talk about the LA exit plan. We're here to seek some questions, uh, answers to the questions and the concerns and complaints. If you can just share with us what went wrong and how do you plan on fixing it. Sure. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you to uh, Council, Councilman, the committee, and the public that's here and is incredibly concerned today. I will share with you first and foremost that all of us at Los Angeles World Airports are taking this incredibly seriously. We took it seriously over a year ago in our construction modeling when we determined that we were going to lose a significant portion of the curb. And indeed, we had a false choice in front of us, a poor choice amongst choices that we were presented. Because of the current condition that had traffic on consistently uh, experiencing 30, 40, 50 minutes of time to travel through the CTA, or even worse, extending into the business and neighborhood communities. We know from our experiences across the aviation system and our peers in the country that airports that have similar magnitude construction reach and actually experience calamity that was unthinkable in their construction programs. And of course, that's airport in the New York City area where passengers were abandoning cars off the freeway, walking off freeway ramps, and spending hours, not just a hour, up to an hour like we were experiencing, but more than that, essentially shutting down significant parts of the airport operations. What we foresaw was that that condition would be the experience at LAX for days, for months, for years on end during the next three years of the most intense construction <coughs> in building the APM. While indeed we have had significant construction, that's so correct, right? LAX is a major airport. 
every inch of its small footprint as the world's fourth busiest airport is highly utilized. But this is the first time since the 84 Olympics that we are touching the land side in the way that we are today. And that is the, the area of the airport that is consistently touched by everybody as the nation and the world's largest origin and destination airport. So we did not enter into this lightly. We do not take it lightly any moment of the day that we have been dedicating as a team 24-7 in the launch of this and the implementation of this operation and continuing to be committed to, uh, to continue to adjust. We knew from other airports experiences that have moved ground transportation um, in response either to construction or to the evolution of more intense ground transportation traffic as of late, that this was going to be complicated. Um, we had no uh, we, sense underestimated the magnitude of what we were going to be encountering here. We knew that it was going to be difficult, that change was going to be difficult, and this solution is not a perfect solution by far, but it was the best solution to make sure that the masses were able to be served reliably and efficiently. And I do submit that we will get there over the course of time of continuing to adjust. Um, we prepared for extensive contingency plannings, knowing that we were going to have to make real-time adjustments, that while there was much we could predict that changes in consumer behavior, passenger traffic, vehicle traffic, where it was going to require for us to be very nimble. And we planned to make sure that at the end of the day that there were people there to help our passengers. That we knew was going to be very, very important for us. So from a large staffing of shuttle buses, but to our team of LA exit staff members that are there on the curb to assist, um, including a partnership with the Workforce Investment Board. We're supplying incredible men and women to be our white glove service and to help uh, passengers know where to go, what to do, and to assist with luggage. That was going to be very important. We continue to refine that. We've had a team on, on duty 24-7 to adjust signage, um, to adjust wayfinding, and to work on adjusting traffic and traffic flows in response to what we're seeing. We recognize that the first day of operations, day one of week one, was a significant challenge for us. And Michelle can help me navigate this, this screen. Indeed was a very significant challenge for us. Um, I just rode through a little bit of the, the changes that, that we have made um, in response to the issues that we saw. Um, you can see here you know, a series of them. We've been sharing them with the public through our press um, and media um, uh, issuances over the course of the last week from more signage, clearer signage, um, ensuring that the actual shuttle stops were more clearly demarcated, um, the training of the shuttle drivers. This was an operation of almost 40 buses with brand new drivers operating in the airport environment. Um, of course, to ensure that we had a speedy travel route for the shuttles, we also did a substantial operational change by flipping the curb and ensuring that the inner lanes would be able to be free for these buses and the flyaway bus to also have immediate access to passengers and to move quickly and with certainty and reliability. Um, so through all those adjustments, we have, as you, again you can see, issued and, and continue to make a number of adjustments thanks to the planning for a dedicated staff. Um, again, as you look through the first, or well, these are rather the, the you know days three through five um, of the operation. Today is the first day of the second week of our implementation. Um, you can see that we have had significant change and learning, learning not just from the team at LAWA and our stakeholders, but learning from uh, the TNCs as well in how to navigate the curb, um, working with us on making this, the experience a smoother one. There's no question that we still have work to do, but by far it is getting better. Um, it was pointed to that we're dealing with a few substantive issues still today. One is the size of the curb and providing more space for queuing of people, ease of queuing, um, as well as um, for, for vehicles. Um, the, what you see here is also another issue, which is this lot for the first time that provides significant transparency to what is happening with the supply of vehicles and the operations of TNCs and taxis in our airport environment. It is essentially, at the, for the first time, in plain sight, in one open area, the ability for us to understand the traffic behavior, 
the supply and demand behaviors and utilization. And we've learned a lot from that, and we're going to continue to adjust as a result. Can you explain the... Uh, the so what, the, you, what, what yeah, the, yeah, this, the screen on the left. Thank yeah. you. So the screen on the left, and this is, uh, again, speaking to some of the supply issues that we've been seeing, this is the holding lot for the TNCs. Um, as you can see, there is, um, from the time stamp, about a 10-minute differential between the, um, the, the pictures that are taken. The one on the left is the holding lot. We see that there are... How close is the holding lot to LA exit lot? Five miles mm -hmm. away. Yeah. Okay. Three five miles away from from the airport, and this is the lot at the same time with a strong queue of people waiting um, to be serviced um, with with um, both TNCs and taxis. So you can see there's quite a number of taxis that are servicing our passengers, and uh, we're very appreciative of that. Um, they have been supplying demand in a very steady stream, and, and that is working um, for, uh, quite well. This is the expansion of the lot. So, you know, as said, there are a number of contingency plans that uh, we have had in at the ready um, and have been executing on. One of the most substantive was while we had uh, done a lot of work on the modeling of the lot, engaged with all of our stakeholders about the lot and its efficiency, um, we did hear uh, very close to opening that there was a concern over the size of the lot. So a few weeks before the opening, the team and I, we secured the ability to expand the lot if needed. Um, and that uh, agreement was done with the current operator. That area of the lot was cleared. And uh, after the first night of operation, we put into a plan with our contractor to construct uh, phase two, um, what we're calling the expansion of the lot. Um, that was complete on Sunday night uh, because that was, again, in our pocket as a contingency. And uh, this will be opening up for expansion beginning tonight at 3 a.m. So, and Ms. Plan, if I may, operation and colleagues, if you have questions, please. Um, we're, we're just an open discussion here of trying to get find some solutions. So I struggle with this here, this slide here. Why didn't we start big? Um, because dating, there's an October 2nd letter that came from Uber expressing concerns about the size of the initial lot. Um, how was the size of the LA exit lot determined, um, like the pickup stalls, and how does the linear footage of curb space at LA exit compare to the amount of curb space previously dedicated to the, uh, the rideshare pickups uh, and also cab pickups adjacent to the terminals? We've been working with our the stakeholders, um, both the TNCs and the taxis, for almost a year on the placement of the lot, the size of the lot, the adequacy of so the lot. So leading up to it. Leading, leading up to it and in intense coordination. So um, this was something that, you're right, the, the letter was about October 2nd with, um, it's a blur to me, but the launch date was... The launch date was October 29th. October 29th. Yes. And so very quickly we navigated to make sure that if this was indeed going to be a major issue and concern, that we were prepared for at least this portion of the lot to expand. So we moved on that very quickly in abundance of caution. Yeah. Um, so you, you had a hurry up offense on knowing that there were some delays, it didn't have adequate space, and here we are now. That's right. This will be launched tomorrow at 3 a.m. That's right. And we had the contractor who's been incredible, again, working overnight. Um, my team worked diligently to even to get this. So why didn't Lawa err on the side of caution on this and maybe did not start big? We research, received the letter. So we've okay, been working gotcha. with the team member, again, the other stakeholders on the sizing of the lot for months and months and months. And it was going to be sufficient at that right. point in time. So abundance of caution. I would have um, preferred to I would have preferred to start big and err on the side of caution and have adequate and larger required yeah. curb space. Every, every inch of our property is used. There's, a, there's an operator with customers that no. use this lot. Um, it's great because many of those customers walk and relieve the, the roadways of, of, of congestion further okay. in the CTA. But it's happening so things 3 a.m. tomorrow, and we'll see how this it plays is. out. But, but that is our oh. challenge is every, you know, there's, there's an impact to someone on Got every it. inch of space that we use. And we're, what we are looking to do is to be most equitable for all of our stakeholders, whether they're parking operators, parking or shuttle providers, taxis, TNCs, to be able to have an equitable marketplace Understood. to, to Mr. play. Mr. Pecorian, you have a question? Yes. You had another question. That's two. But the comparative curbs. That's, oh, that's what I was Yeah, the, to the answer the question of the comparable, cur comparable yeah. curb space of I'll linear. 
uh, right, linear I have, the, I have the numbers for the taxis per mm -hmm. space. So, mm -hmm. I mean, oh, Michelle. Michelle Schwartz. Yes, She's so. For the record, sorry. Yes, Michelle Schwartz and the Chief of External Affairs at LAWA. Um, and so. The linear the, footage. Yeah, yeah, so the linear footage um, for calves, um, it is um, 1080 linear feet at LA exit, um, which is um, actually. Um, and compared to about 1,100 linear feet of curb in the terminals total for all nine spaces, um, but actually because there is um, additional queuing space, um, there's space for 66 vehicles in LA exit um, versus there was space for 54 in the entire CTA, the CTA yeah. for taxis. Um, and now with the expansion, there will be space for even more for taxis. Got it. Um, for TNCs, it's harder to say because they didn't have precise queuing space, they were sort of all over the Come and go. Yeah. So just a further follow-up to that, uh, and I think that anticipated the question I was going to ask, which is why 17% um, of the lot was uh, devoted to cabs compared to 83% to TNCs. Right. Was the goal to kind of based correlate on, it with what the curb space the was and, in the horseshoe. And based on the market share and also um, one of the things that's not as reflected there is that the taxis also are able to double up um, and are able and are very efficient at loading okay. in that doubled up area as So well. if I could just go back a few slides to the average wait time chart that you had. Can we go back a few? Yeah. That shows the average wait time, that one. So. I think this chart is very telling because the yellow line, which is near the very bottom of the vertical axis throughout the entire fiasco, represents average wait time for taxi cabs. And the huge spikes that go nearly to the top of that vertical axis is Uber primarily and Lyft. And so I'm wondering if given the efficiency of queuing cabs, it might not make more sense to devote a more significant share of the lot to the more efficient operator and so that the passenger experience of not having to wait 60 minutes will be addressed by having more cabs and fewer TNCs in the lot. We're so going We're going to continue to look at the efficiency, the utilization, and make sure that every square inch of the lot in this expansion, and then as we consider even further, that we're getting the best utilization from all of those modes. So that's but something it, we're paying very close attention to. Okay. You can continue unless you have a question. No, you I have one more. Because in, uh, so, yeah, uh, where's the... So uh, I think Councilman Bonin, yeah. you know, this is something I think that's incredibly important. You know, this, this was not, I would say, our goal. Right. Our goal was to prevent the calamity of construction-related impacts. But what we have seen in the first week, less than, less than a week, is an incredible relief of traffic both in the CTA and in surrounding areas. You know, I certainly, and we are paying close attention to the reports of delayed traffic and, and, and congestion to get into the lot. Um, that's something that we are, we are assessing and analyzing because our markers our markers on um, other streets that we have been measuring consistently for a long time now reflect that vehicle travel time has significantly increased in surrounding streets as well as in the CTA itself. And that does benefit 85% of the passengers that are using LAX every single day 85%. as well as other modes. Correct. So that, that is a, a benefit. Again, I don't want to uh, you know, rest too much on this because, again, we continue to grow. Construction, you know, again, there is a huge crane outside of my office. The piles are beginning to come in. There's going to be more construction yeah. vehicles and people and personnel active in the, um, within the CTA and in the surrounding streets. And that is, again, what we are, what we are facing, um, you know, here at LAX for the next two to three years right, right. of intensity of construction. Right. Um, we're going to continue to, to work on this, um, even beyond the expansion that goes in tonight. We are continuing to use right. technology. Um, there are things that we can do better, and we're committed to making sure we do those things better for the passenger experience, more reliability on the shuttle buses, ensuring that those customer service levels are met, um, both on the in the shuttle experience as well as right. in the CTA lot. Yeah, I said it's going to get, and the mayor puts it best, he says it's going to get worse before it gets better. So if you're coming in to our airport, next few years, take a deep breath, 
slow your roll and get to the appropriate place that you need to be at. And, and this comes with the growing pains of uh, an airport that is experiencing the most infrastructure dollars than any airport in the country today. But at the same time, it's important for us to minimize those inconveniences. And this, I believe, is, gives us a, a starting point, uh, an experience, our first experience of, you know, hearing loud and clear the frustrations from passengers coming to our airport. And, and speak, I just want to get back to the ingress, egress of the LA exit lot. How many um, entrances, exits do we have? Do we need to build out more um, so that we have a better flow of, of the, the cars coming in and out of the exit lot? This is Mike Christensen. He is actually leading the task force on our uh, implementation 30-day plan. And Mike will speak to, he's been leading uh, day and night the yep. expansion of the lot and can, can review that with you. Chairman Buscano, uh, council members, uh, thanks for the opportunity to address this. As you look at the graphic, you see the existing lot and the expanded lot. And one of the things that the expansion does is it allows us to adjust the traffic flows in. Uh, we've heard a lot this afternoon about the congestion. We've been very cognizant of that and have been pulling about all the levers we know to make that uh, more manageable. But what we're going to be doing with the expansion lot is creating a whole new entrance for the, the, uh, the lift, which will be going to the expansion lot. And we've added a lane on the egress, so there's more capacity to go out through this whole thing. There's never been a real problem getting out, at least once, yeah. uh, once we're out on, the, on streets. We're on relatively free-flowing. So we've included expansions in both areas. In addition to more capacity for traffic in, we're rechannelizing the traffic. It's going to be more dedicated to certain modes and certain operators. We're also increasing the entrance to the LA exit lot from Skyway, which is the north part of the facility to the left, which should also decrease that traffic. And paying particular attention to the impact on local streets. Mm -hmm. The street on the bottom, you see by Worldway North, there's actually a small street in there called Little Century. And there have been challenges with Little Century backing up onto Century and, Im and impacting that facility. The changes we're going to make at 3 a.m. are geared towards dramatically reducing that congestion and allowing much more free, free flow on Century and also keeping the congestion down on the north end. One of the other byproducts of what has happened here is a lot of the congestion coming out of Westchester, particularly at Lincoln, has dissipated, mm -hmm. and we hope to be able to continue that. Would you consider on Century to have a dedicated lane for taxis and TNCs? And for them, we heard from testimony, time is money, um, like a carpool lane on a, on a highway. Is that something that, that you all may consider? Part of the plan going forward tomorrow morning will be a basically dedicated access for the TNC that's going to be using the expansion lot, which takes them out of the mix for all the rest. We're adding an entire lane on the north access, which would be the other TNC and taxis, and we believe that capacity along... So there's no plans on Century to give them a, a, a free lane? Not so a free lane. Because we heard from some of the uh, the drivers, taxi drivers and Uber and Lyft drivers that, you know, they're, they've given up coming to our airport because it's taken them so long to get and they're, they're parked on Sentry. I'm just throwing it out there. And we understand that, uh, Council Member, and that's exactly what we're going after in these changes that are going to happen tonight. So on the on the law law segment, yeah, yeah. So we'll we're going to pilot and see what that dedicated access looks like. But if you go upper Sentry, there are all sorts of stakeholders that use that corridor. Yeah. yeah. So we've got to we again gotta balancing everybody's out. needs and other shuttle operators as well. It's, it's, ahead, I'll, I'll just ask, um, was there more to the presentation or? No. Okay, all right. So um, I just want to, not to take away from the, the, the really huge imperative to, to continue to fix and improve the current situation, but I, I, I do want to note the, the, this slide because the, the fact that the, the, the speed of getting in and out improved for 85% of the passengers at a time when it really should have started getting worse is an accomplishment. I think we should acknowledge that. 
and then quickly pivot back to how do you fix the, the current mess. But I, but I think that's important to note because we're not hearing from the 85% who are having a better experience right now, which is natural. It's just the, the, the way the world is. Um, how much of the, the, we've talked about the expanding the lot. How much of the, the, the problem has been a lack of available inventory from the, 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 the transit providers? So it's, I, I believe that, you know, we see have a lot of transparency that we never had before, right? When you have the horseshoe and the dispersion mm -hmm. of traffic and, you know, we know a lot of anecdotally, um, you know, our customers and the surveys, we've been putting mystery shoppers out into our environment as well as doing surveys of travelers um, and asking about their experience relative to before. Um, we actually get a lot of not neutral experiences because people were used to having to order um, their TNCs from the plane um, because the wait times were 30 or 45 minutes. Um, so that's something we're continuing to, to watch and manage very closely. Um, but one thing that we do see is that where traffic will be free flowing for taxis um, for one mode of the TNC, there will be a supply problem on the other side and the lines will continue to queue and there will not be an availability of vehicles coming through. Um, again, we're asking those questions with our partners. We don't know why. Um, we want to understand it, um, see how we can help to solve it, though it's not something we're directly responsible for, um, but that is something that we are trying to get a better understanding of. And so make sure some of the supply. problems would be eased if Uber or Lyft were actually providing more vehicles Indeed. and more drivers. Supply. Indeed. Supply. Okay. That, that's, that, that's, a, that's an important point. If, um, if that is part of the problem, do we have any information on whether or not uh, they're instituting surge pricing at a time when they're having fewer vehicles there than they should? No doubt. That is a dynamic we are really trying to understand um, because we are seeing a trade-off between one offering surge pricing and another not, and then that creates a dis an imbalance between driver availability and also the economics for passengers. Well, that creates. I mean, it creates the, the economics for the passengers. I mean, th they can get they can get killed either way. You know, I was talking about if we didn't do anything, they'd be stuck in the CTA with the meter running. But then on the other hand, you've got this system where you know, if, if Uber is not sending enough vehicles, and they're not here to explain whether or not that's intentional or not, but if they're not sending uh, enough vehicles, and then they're implementing surge pricing, people are going to get screwed in on that from their pocketbook perspective, but the whole system is going to start falling apart because there are people who drive for both Lyft and Uber, and if they're driving for Lyft, they're going to switch over to Uber, and then you've got chaos on, on the queues. Right. You're you're calling. You're 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 absolutely sharing the symptoms that we're seeing mm -hmm. and considering, um, yeah. you know, what the tools are to address those for our customers. But but Mike, we didn't see that issue when prior to having this LA exit. We may not have. It may have been there. That's something we don't quite understand. Um, but at the same time, in talking to Michelle, they had access to the entire CTA. It may have been hidden. It may have been hidden in other terminals and such or throughout the throughout yeah, the it's CTA. It's not transparent. That those cues and those imbalances could have been there. We hear again mystery shopper and guest survey reports that say, "Yes, you know, a driver would have cancellation or it'd take a long time." You know, so do, do, we're, do, we're trying to get. We we don't have that comparison. And does, again, those does the NILA uh, give us the authority to? Uh, compel or if not ask uh, the companies about mm -hmm. what they're doing with surge pricing and what they're doing to message out to their drivers that there are available spots and an actual need? With this unveiling itself, uh, Councilman, we are looking at what tools, what we have in the NILA to be able to get more transparency information. And just for the record, the NILA is the agreement we have between the transportation yes. um, network yeah, it, companies, it gets, right? Yeah, it's, you know, the expression curiouser and curiouser comes to mind. Uh, just a quick question. We, we heard a lot about people who are really vulnerable. Uh, yeah. Seniors, people with disabilities who can't lift their luggage. Uh, we talked about what we're doing to deal with the, the, the queuing. Can you tell us what we're doing to, A, make any adjustments for people with disabilities? Um, 
to help people get on and off the, the shuttles with luggage, and what we're doing about the question of, of the elements uh, yes. when, when they hit. Yes, and, and Mike, I'll ask you to, to comment further. That's, that's something that we have thought about from the beginning. We have our own um, airport uh, ADA council at the airport um, with a number of stakeholders. We had them go through and experience the lot, tour it beforehand, worked with our partner carriers, the wheelchair providers, to make sure that they would have the ability to assist passengers the entire part of the journey, including the operator at the parking lot having wheelchairs and the ability to assist. We're going to continue to look into the issues of people that are not necessarily in wheelchair and under those rules and regulations but need help. Yeah. Um, again, our, our impression is that we have a lot of staff dedicated to doing that. Uh, we'll continue to metric that. If we're missing the mark, we're going to beef that up because that's just, it's, again, it's important in making that transition up and down from a shuttle with, with luggage. I, we, we, we fully understand that. So we'll continue. For the record, the, the shuttles are ADA compliant, correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah, so regulatory-wise, we're, we're, we're there, but I think it's about making sure that there's that additional touch in the guest experience, particularly with a, a change like this. And what about the, the and, and Council Member, one of the, oh, yes. one of the issues on the, the shade and the rain exposure, uh, we took a minimalist approach going in, part, for, part of which is for expediency. We all had a, a very interesting wake-up call in the middle of the week, as you recall, a little event, little precipitation event that went through the area. There was a cloud burst, I think it was Saturday morning, just mm -hmm. 10 minutes. But, so um, yes. we are taking the expansion lot. We'll, in fact, as we speak, we're having temporary enclosures put up in the expansion lot that we will cover it very temporarily. And we're about a, two weeks away from another round of enclosures that will go up on both lots. Those are very aggressively uh, planned now. We're in uh, a review and procurement stage. And when those come in, there will be very substantial both shade and also rain coverage. And then there will yet be a, yet a third wave that will be a more permanent type of structures that is being planned. So we, we take this, we take this uh, very seriously. So a, a, a question on like real time uh, monitoring of passenger complaints, concerns, the, what what's Alawa doing? And not not just this specific cons issue that we're experiencing now, but next few years. Do we have a, a social media presence on site that's monitoring the the Facebook blasts or the tweets, the nasty tweets, saying I'm never going to fly in LAX ever again? So what are we doing to monitor uh, those complaints and concerns via social media networks? Absolutely. We have constant monitoring of our social media, and we also are responding on social media. We can't respond to every single person who writes, but obviously, you know, with the major points of concern, we are being sure to get responses to them, okay. you know, good or bad, and being able to be responsive in that way, and we are absolutely monitoring that 24-7. And then, Deborah, you mentioned something about your the peers, the airport peers. I know San Francisco did something similar to, actually did the exact same thing. What did we learn? Did we... Do we lob a call to our friends up north well, back in June when they um, moved the curbside pickup to another location? Absolutely. I've deployed a team both to New York airports, LaGuardia, when they did this, both first after their, tra their construction calamity and then when they also opened up a remote lot, um, San Francisco, Portland. We enjoy a very strong network of, again, you know, we're, we're all of the airports in the country are focused on safety, security. So there's a strong degree of collaboration in lessons learned and information sharing. We'll be doing the same for other airports because um, this is going to become more common either for congestion or for construction so I've been um, introduced by my six-year-old son to um, natural oils and for me it's lavender so perhaps we can have sprints of lavender at all of our terminals just <laughs> kind of spread throughout mr. Bond are you okay with that no, <laughs> lavender <laughs> just calms people down yeah. um, I sit next to you all the time okay the <laughs> essential oils I think we ought to have in our, yeah, we're in our airport, because security. again, these next three years are going to be critical yeah. as we're making these significant improvements. Um, Mr. Gregorian, do you have anything? I do. Uh, I'm still kind of struggling with um, that chart uh, that showed uh, the superior efficiency of the 
cab industry. And then, of course, I had the same question that Mr. Bonin raised about the surge pricing, which I'm as confident as I am that I am sitting here right now, that customers who are coming into LAX are getting gouged by the TNCs uh, under with this, you know, excuse that now there's congestion and so they have to jack up the price. I have no doubt about that. I, I'm sure that your uh, investigation will bear that out. But to, to Mr. Bonner's point about speeding up things in the, um, in the horseshoe, it's an important point. And for most people who don't take one of these means of travel to get in and out of the airport, that is a good thing. And it's, you know, credit to you to, for seeing that happen in a really difficult, um, challenging situation. But since we know that cab lines at cab stands are the most efficient way to get people quickly out of the airport, and we also now know that if, if what I understood correctly, that the share of the lot reflects market share, that only 17% of the rides were cabs. And 83% of the congestion problem caused by rides coming into the airport uh, to pick people up was caused by the TNCs. So wouldn't the simple solution be to just set up cab stands in the horseshoe, get the TNCs out, and let people get quickly in and out with cabs? Why isn't that the simple, obvious solution to this problem? If we had the space. Let her answer, please. Thank you. Thank oh, you. And, and, and related to that, if I can, I'm sorry, Deborah, but just to kind of put a little bit more context into this, we had this extensive discussion around the NILA, and it went on for days. And one of the critical points of discussion was, well, how are we going to prevent cruising by the TNCs in the airport? Because if they're cruising for rides, that's going to jack up the congestion, and we're going to have a big problem. And we were assured, no, there's going to be geofencing, there's going to be limitations on how many can come in, they're not going to affect Mr. Bonnet's neighborhoods because they're only going to be allowed to be in certain places. And we all, we, we've soon found out, as soon as they started operating, that was all BS. That, in fact, congestion went up. You had to take steps to address that congestion because TNCs were cruising in the airport and going around and around and causing congestion. We read that in the LA Times. So, from what I, as a layperson looking at this from the outside, what I'm seeing is an inefficient mode of ground transportation that is getting rich off our airport while it's violating the very contract that it entered into w with us for us to give them permission to go and do that. I'm seeing that. And then on the one hand, I'm seeing the tried and true mode of ground transportation that has serviced this airport for generations being shoved into this lot in the same way that the TNCs are so that passengers have access to no ground transportation other than the shuttles. So I, I, that, it just doesn't make sense to me that these should be treated in the same manner. An efficient, you know, reliable, um, fixed price mode of transportation compared to the wild west of the TNCs um, that are causing the very problem that we're trying to fix. So why can't we just move the TNCs to the lot, set up cab stands, and call it a day? If it, <laughs> we, 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 we have the challenge again of this very finite footprint. The way the operation has been set up, it relies on the high-speed bus um, going through the inner lanes. And so the, the, the circumstances just do not provide us the space to be able to move any one of the modes back in easily or readily. Um, what I can commit to you is we'll continue to look at the utilization, the modes, and also the availability of curb, right? As projects begin to evolve and we see that we are surviving the construction and we get space back, then we'll have the opportunity for future decision making. But at this point in time, we need all of that space returned in order to, for the airport to function um, in, a, in a reasonable manner. Again, this is not going to be the full fix during construction, but to at least be able to survive the construction, we need all of that space from the curb back in order even for this system to work. Well, I mean, given the, 
the relatively small amount of that space that was devoted to cabs before, uh, since the takeover of the TNCs. Um, it seems to me that that, I, I mean, I would ask that you at least look at whether the math works, I guess. Given the, great, the significantly greater efficiency of cab transportation, that if giving up that much curb space, for cab stands wouldn't significantly reduce this problem and also have a fairly minimal impact on horseshoe congestion, as it always has. Except, except through the construction, but, but understood, we'll, we'll, we'll look at it. We, we did look at that very carefully before. It's still thousands of vehicles, but um, we'll, we'll, again, out of uh, obviously the respect for this, your request, we will we'll continue to analyze that. Councilman. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bonin. So the thing I'd ask you to be mindful of when you do that is, um, you know, we have this slide up that talks about one of the, the successes of this that, that, is, that is unheralded. But I think the other thing that's been successful about this is the fact that the, the, uh, the, the, the curbside rim is now sort of a bus only lane, effectively, which is a big deal. Uh, and uh, has had the benefit of allowing the, the shuttles to move folks to the, the remote lot more quickly. And so as you do the analysis, which I think is, is, is warranted, would it have an impact on that? The other thing is, one of the things that, that I think it incentivizes is having the bus only lane is people using the, the, the other shuttles and stuff. Right. And have we have, I know it's early, has there been any uptick in the use of the flyaway or the G line with the shuttle? Yeah. Or van we're, pools? We're, we're, we're looking yeah. to see that because that is, again, like this incredible, right. and it's that high occupancy vehicle, flyaway, yeah. G line. Those yeah, I mean, if we're talking about efficient yeah. modes and inefficient modes, right. making right. it easier for the multi passenger yeah. things is, is best. Yeah. I'm also more concerned, aside from that, losing business in the next few years because of people are going to be disincentivized yeah. or just frustrated with coming in and out of our airports. But again, it's, it's going to, I mean, we have a vision, the vision is going to be implemented and we're going to have a world class, world class airport with time in the next that few years. There. That is a first class neighbor, Mike Bonin. So members, if um, seeing no other concerns or comments, I, I'd like to um, uh, continue this item and please I'm, I'll open up to my call if you guys want to see anything to come back to us um, specifically after the Thanksgiving holiday if you can Michelle go back to that slide that sh the the wait times for me and f for us is is a concern I like to um, go back and come back to us after the holidays or actually after the Thanksgiving holiday and uh, report back on the wait times for passengers boarding the shuttles uh, to the uh, LA exit lot wait times for taxi and rideshare pickups uh, at the LA exit lot, and wait times for taxi and rideshare drivers entering uh, the LA exit lot. And, and specific report backs on um, improvements that, that have been made, are being made, will be made for seniors, people with disabilities, uh, and the, the, um, the, the sort of climate uh, stuff that Mike talked about. Do you and, have anything uh, you, well, finally, Ms. Flint, I sent you a letter with a number of specific questions yesterday. Um, I don't need to go through all those questions right now and have you answer, but if you could answer uh, that letter back in writing and then include that in the report back to the committee as well. Sure, without objection. Without objection. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate, and thank you all for those who joined us to speak on this item. I appreciate your presence. So with that, members, we have general public comment. If I can um, turn to general public comment, um, Dennis, if you can sync this for me. Thank you. Okay. Um, oh, it looks like most of you spoke on item number one. This is for general public comment to speak on a non-agenda item. Camo. Camo. Johannes, I know Kamo and Johannes also spoke on number one. You're free. You're free to speak on uh, any item. I mean, anything else you, that's on your mind. Uh, Michael Mitchell, yeah. please uh, non-agenda item, general public Can comment. I still have a little bit of this subject. No, on? I mean, well. <laughs> see, Clifton Moore had a fantastic design. Uh, right now, I go through there every day. Uh, where the buses go on the inside. There's plenty of room to do everything. I mean, you can put the cabs in there, the, the scheduled buses in there. There's plenty of room there. He's right about everything he said, and the rest of you 
or, or don't realize what's there. If you go, I drive around there every day for 30 years, and they never had one meeting with us. Now, how is that? You know, I mean, how can you have not one meeting if you own the company, all right? I had already give away half my company because they put us outside with Super Shuttle and, and combined us with On Call, which they don't exist. They should put us in with, with uh, the flyway. There's plenty of room in there for cabs and everybody to go around each other, even though they filled in with a one lane. There's no re It's fixed. It says 16 miles an hour. If you put them out there, Thank that's you. it. Thank that's you, Mr. all Mitchell. you need. Your name, sir? Uh, my name is Johannes Mershaw. Johannes, is there a commo here? Would you like to speak on a non-agenda item? Please come no. forward. Okay. Uh, Leon Slomovic on non-agenda item. On a non-agenda item, please come forward. And uh, Makai Giller. Okay. Thanks for your patience. Go ahead. Johannes. No, my my uh, uh, issue is, you know, the same thing that, you know, I thought the public uh, comment comes first. My question to them, you know, I was trying to ask them, how did they come up with this uh, plan? And, you know, for me, even for my kids, when they made a mistake, they correct that mistake and move forward. Right now, even the, what they are saying for tomorrow is the same thing. They are not taking in consideration the, uh, you know, the time that's taking us to go to the, you know, the pickup area. Expanding the parking, you know, the parking area is not going to solve the waiting period time for us to go inside. And they are just going, you know, the mistake that they are doing again and again and again. And uh, another thing, I don't know who they, you know, uh, talk to. Either the senior citizens, the business uh, people, or when they implement this uh, problem, uh, with this, this plan. Thank you. Leon? Okay, quick question. Is there a mic? McKay? Sorry, Leon. McKay Giller? Okay. So you'll be our final speaker for general public comment. Yeah, my, my question is, uh, if I can't comment on the item number one, can we submit additional comments to the committee for absolutely. their consideration? Absolutely. Can I comment on item Go ahead. Number speak, one? On it, speak what you want. Speak so, your mind. So just to bring more perspective uh, about what uh, Councilman Gregorian had said, the number of people in, increased at, going through LIX by 24%. Number of vehicles has increased by 42%. According to lava figures, since uh, 2016 was the largest increase in number of vehicles. Wow. Two other items: one, the PIN number that's used by TNCs is exactly what's used for on-demand transportation. They're classified as pre-advanced transportation. Minimum wage is something that lava is supposed to enforce. They have a standard for it. They haven't been enforced. Mr. Bonin and Mr. Uh, and, and Mr. Gakorian have supported the motion uh, on that issue too. And we'd like to have more uh, transparent information from uh, LAVA and more uh, context appropriate information so that everybody is well informed. Thank you, sir. Okay, being the last speaker, that's, uh, we are uh, now adjourned. Thank you all for joining us.